Oh, welcome to another episode of Federal Church Presents, Better Than Blueberry. Continuing our coverage of the global financial system collapse 2023, the worst ever. It's another good, uh, or it is a good note, I mean. That's another descriptor of how people are getting bored. Things are not getting better for The Great Wealth Illusion. It is no secret that for the past decade and a half, the Fed has made it its mission to create a wealth effect in the economy by boosting asset prices. Back in 2010, Bernanke explained, higher stock prices will boost consumer wealth and help increase confidence. No, it just made the uh, people who could actually afford stocks richer. That's, you know, if they weren't imposed by inflation, which can also spur spending. Increased spending will lead to higher incomes and profits that, in a virtuous circle, will further support economic expansion. <coughs> so he began a process of printing money with the explicit purpose of inflating asset prices, a policy that has been continued by each of his successors. Zero Hedge, we know this is neither Ben Bernanke nor a subsequent Fed head, but to be rank any excuse to show Mnuchin's <laughs> wife in this pic seems appropriate when discussing wealth. It's pretty fucking funny. That's what they get for, uh, you know, bullshitting their garbage and they're screwing me out of the, uh, well, not screwing me, but uh, I volunteered to be Secretary of the Treasury. And they thought I was going to be driving their shit around. Yeah, congratulations with your Bolshevik idiots. <coughs> Over this time, Quantitative easing, as the policy is called, has been inordinately successful in boosting asset prices while not so effective in boosting the economy. The most straightforward evidence of this is the fact that household net worth relative to the economy has soared to, re to record highs during the QE era. Bid worked the way back Bernanke intended, and after a brief surge in the ratio, it would flatten out its growth and the economy caught up to growth in asset prices. Clearly, that did not happen. It does appear, however, as if the central bank did at least accomplish the first half of Bernanke's mission, boosting wealth. Even if it didn't quite accomplish the second half, kickstarting a virtuous circle of economic growth. But when you look at household net worth relative to the growth in the money supply, it's clear that the rise in the formal was nothing more than an illusion. And again, this is uh, also what I was saying about how, you know, like, uh, what's his name, uh, buddy, uh, actual buddy Henderson over there was uh, stating, oh look, these countries have growth, like this country had this growth, or this country had this growth. But those are all nominal growth rates, if they're not fudged anyway. And in real terms, after inflation, they've actually had contraction. So, any supposed growth in the United States is not real growth. It was all contraction, especially with the double-digit inflation that they have. Net worth was actually declined, has actually declined relative to M2 since 2008 and is now back to levels not seen in the 20 years prior to that time. The truth is that there has been no real wealth created at all when measured this way. Again, in real terms too, you know, when taking into account inflation, there has been no increase in wealth. And when you deflate GDP by the growth in the money supply, the picture is even more damning. And this is actually a different thing. Since quantitative easing began in 2008, the trajectory of the economy in relation to the growth of M2 has been far more deeply negative than that in household net worth. The truth is that there has been no real growth in the economy since 2008 when it is measured in this way. Again, we're just in real terms too. In fact, the economy has been in protracted decline relative to the money supply for decades, a phenomenon that has only worsened during the QE era. And this is also what I was saying. Well, they didn't recover from the 2008 collapse, and now that things are collapsing, they sure as hell are not recovering. <coughs> as this week's CPI report reminds us, which is fudged, that after decades of disinflation, the most recent round of money printing has led to the return of inflation. At the end of the day, it may not be the economy or household net worth, but inflation that the central bank's greatest monetary experience has been the most effective in stoking. Of course, history could have told us that would be the likely outcome long before Bernanke ever began firing up the printing print. It's, you know, yeah, it's pretty funny. I've been saying that for decades, for over a decade. I mean. And its failure to heed the warnings of history may help to explain why confidence in the Fed is now at an all-time low, a trend that may only exacerbate the inflation problem over time. 
That's not me. It certainly will. And don't forget why. You can pay your diet. Pay that Bitcoin wallet there.